buckle yourselves in because it's time to learn a little bit of history about the architecture that we're going to be making in Minecraft. The Tudors were a famous but ruthless Welsh-English family that reigned in England and Wales between 1485 and 1603. Any houses that were built in that period are called Tudor houses. They are famous for their black and white effect. Houses that look like this are often used in fantasy stories and games, but they're still actually found all over England and some are over 500 years old. They're made of a wooden frame and the spaces are filled with wattle and daub. Wattle and what? Wattle and daub. Wattle are interwoven sticks and daub is a mixture of clay, sand and, um, well, poo-poo smeared into the wattle to make the wall. Finally, it's washed with some lime wash to make it white. Obviously, we're talking about nearly 120 years of architecture over a whole country. So every house town to town will be different, but that's the basics of them. So let's learn how to make one in Minecraft. As with a lot of my builds, the first thing that we're going to do is work out the framework. We're gonna start off with the very first layer and this is the foundation of the entire build. As you can see, I'm placing a log block and three blocks in between them and placing another one. We're going to make an entire rectangle out of this. So I've got five and three along to complete this rectangle dimensions. It's important that you make sure that the spacing is exactly three between every single log all the way around. We're then going to build up each of those log pillars about four or five blocks. Of course, there's a lot of room for variations on your personal taste. We're then gonna replace all of those filler blocks with some more log. You can see how that could have got confusing if you didn't use a different color. So, we've got our foundation, we know the base plan. We're now gonna work on the second floor framework and we're gonna start by placing some upside down staircases in each of the corners. We're now going to continue the framework, but create a very small overhang. It's a very definitive feature of Tudor houses to have this, one to make it more structurally sound, and to maximize floor space. So as you can see, there's just a one block overhang and in the corners, the wood is actually floating, but this will not be very obvious once everything starts coming together. So I've created a very simple box framework on one half of the build and I'm stopping just before the center and I'm going to create another one that's slightly smaller on the other side. So I'm essentially going to have two separate bits of framework either side of the build, one smaller than the other. There's a lot of flexibility in this design. I'm then adding a overhang for the roof just to define where it's going to go all the way around using staircase. So we can start to see where this framework is actually going now. As I said earlier, there's a lot of flexibility with what you can do with the Tudor house. You can edit each and every shape, you can make a different size rectangle, you can even change the entire shape of the build if you want. So I encourage you to have a little bit of an experiment. What I'm going to do now is start filling in the spaces in between the framework much like the real Tudors would have done when they made these houses but I'm also going to make sure that these shapes are a little bit different throughout each face of the wall. I'm also going to as you can see leave this one completely different because that's where I'm going to be putting the door. To decorate it with a bit of an artistic interpretation, I've made an overhang of dark oak and leaving a space for the door to go itself. And then I've got my feature piece right in the middle where I filled it in with a load of white concrete powder and wool like I did everywhere else and also making quite a sizable window. I'm adding some clay either side and filling it in with some fences and fence gates either side decorated with some staircase and some slabs. 
this is going to be roughly the technique that I'm going to use when decorating and detailing this house. And we're going to do lots of different designs as we go along. So don't worry if it goes a little bit too fast. Every single one should come out a little bit differently. I also added, just in between the top of the roof and the wall, some upside down staircases and some more support beams that run diagonally in the corners. We're basically going to use this detailing technique all the way around the build in different ways and just slight variations on them. So as you can see on the short side of this build, I've gone for something very similar, but on the top half, I've barely even segmented it up. I've added one large window and some more diagonal supports and just some slabs across the middle. And again, that little bit of upside down staircase at the top to give it a bit more depth. I'm also going to mess with all of the supports down here as well. So as you can see, I've sort of separated it up, added a line in the middle, but not with all of them. So you've really got to experiment with it and see what looks the best. You can often have some without any windows at all. Don't be tempted to overfill your houses with windows. In reality, windows were very, very expensive. Glass was a commodity, so they actually had very few windows. And if they did, they would be incredibly small diamond-shaped ones. And that's why I've put in the fence and the fence gate technique, so that later on I can put some grey glass behind it and mimic what the windows look like in reality as closely as possible in Minecraft. So as you can see, I'm still filling in all of these panels in varying shades of the concrete powder and the wool and filling it in with some different windows here and there. None of these sides have ended up exactly the same and it's part of the charm of a Tudor house to be very handmade, to look like it's almost falling over. Some of them with age have shifted so much that they look like they are going to topple. But as they were built then, it would look something like this. It wasn't made by incredibly talented builders, but they've got such a great charm about them. So each one of our walls is now complete and they've all got their own features with them. We now need to move on to the most difficult thing about this build the roof. It has such a different style to what you would be used to on this channel. And if you find it too difficult, don't worry, I have an alternative to show you at the end. So what I'm doing is mixing in some dark clay, some spruce log, and some dark oak planks. And I'm making a rectangle that runs all the way around the build. Fairly simple to begin with. And we're going to go in one block and do exactly the same thing, trying to mix them in as equally as possible and not having too much in one place. The next bit is where it starts to get a bit more difficult, adding in some shape. If you count in from the bottom layer three blocks and then start placing them on the second layer from there, you should start to develop a shape and in the corners try and create a gradual gradient from the center. So we're going to be building it from the bottom up which is fairly difficult. So we're going to keep adding in layer after layer and sometimes we're going to skip a layer to try and get that very gradual shape of the roof. Like I said, it's quite difficult to get this one spot on. The shape that Tudor houses have their roofs at isn't possible with staircases. So I'm going to give you a quick slow-mo pan in front so you can see that I've gone up two blocks and then one, and then another two, and then another one. And we're going to continue this pattern and slowly bring it in closer and closer to the center. And at the corners, we're having one block in the corners and then removing one, and then removing another, then having another one. You can kind of see where we're going with this. The beauty of mixing in all of these different textures is that if there is a single mistake in this build, in this formula, it really shouldn't be that noticeable. It's about the overall shape, and if that looks wrong, that's where you need to start tinkering with each of the layers until you kind of get where you want to be. Eventually, you will meet at the top and everything should tie in quite nicely. I'm adding a bit of log over the top and some staircases to create a nice pattern and then some slabs in between to try and rough it up and make it look a bit more handmade and a bit more, you know, 
cottage-like in a sense. So that is the roof as it stands. Quite difficult to copy if you looked at it just now. It's very hard to see where each layer is, so tr do try and do it layer by layer until you reach the top. But once you've done that, things are really starting to come together now. We've got our complete house. We've got the walls, we've got the details, and we've got the roof. There's a few more things that we can do, including adding a very iconic chimney. The Tudor houses, if you were rich enough, had decorative chimneys, and bricks weren't really used as widely to make actual walls, but they were used decoratively to make some nice chimneys. Remember, there was no central heating back then. You used a fire to heat up your whole house. So some additional details to this build would be of course adding some flower pots and some leaves and making it look more cottage-like and roughing it up, having more gardens, some long grass and that sort of thing. And going back on what I said earlier, adding plenty of glass behind all of those fence gates and fences to mimic the style of window that they had back then. Remembering of course, that windows were very, very expensive. So that's it for this design. I have got an interior to show you and another design. This is more of a Tudor cottage and there are examples of these still around the country I live in, the UK, right now. It is not a fantasy build, although they do use this design when they're making stories and that sort of thing, especially during medieval period stories and that kind of thing. I think this looks absolutely adorable. It's a very, very cute building, and when it's in its setting of a forest and has a garden and maybe even some town around it, it looks phenomenal. So let's have a look at what we can do on the inside very briefly before I show you another example that I made before this one. I often go through quite a few prototypes. So on the inside, we still have an extensive framework. Remember, this whole house is timber framed and the walls are just filled in with some poop and clay and some sticks so it's all about that log framework that makes its way throughout the house and then we've got some beds and some tables and some very simple things remember to put in the chimney it's one of the biggest things the fireplace keeps it all warm and here's the other example that I wanted to show you I obviously go through quite a few prototypes along with the help of my team in this case uh, happy jellyfish and pearlescent moon and I also came up with this design the inn the Tudor inn there are houses that look like this still in the UK as well like I said there were so many variations on Tudor houses in general as you go throughout the country the local resources change and the sizes of course as well this is a giant l-shaped one but it still follows very similar techniques of making the framework and all the support beams and detailed in almost exactly the same way the biggest difference in this one is that it's very uniform on the one that we just did, there was big segments and big rectangles that were very different sizes. On this one, everything is usually a three by three in shape. And the roof, as you can see, is very different as well. We've got a normal staircase roof with a mixture of clay and brick to make a tiled effect. Obviously, there's no tile block in Minecraft. I wish there was. So that's just another option when making it. Thank you very much for watching this Tudor House tutorial, and I hope you enjoyed the little historical facts in there as well when we make anything that exists in real life and still is here today. If you want to see more videos like this, leave a comment down below telling me what part of history in the country you would like to see buildings from, and leave a like because it does show me the interest level that you have in these types of videos. Thank you very much again for watching, and goodbye!